how well can we use biology to make things that will be beneficial to, for, for humans. Really, your imagination is the limit. You can do what you would like to do. Whether it's a great industrial revolution, we'll, we'll see. I think that's one of the things we're here to try and find out. So what is synthetic biology? Well, obviously it's something new but not so new. It, it is an extension of genetic modification. Uh, people try and, and sell it, oversell it perhaps, but the m basic techniques are molecular biology, genetic modification that we've been doing all the time. The difference is that it's in much larger scale and in a much faster speed. So we are modifying organisms and we are seeing what effect that modified organism will have. And we've already in, in many fields, particularly in um, uh, biopharmaceuticals and in food, in agriculture, seen the benefits of genetic modification. And of course, across cell biology, it's, it's so important. Most of the stuff is really done in bacteria, but they can be applied into eukaryotes as well. For example, you can try and think of creating organisms, microbes, which can actually detect cancer cells. So you swallow your can uh, these microbes and you can detect whether you have cancer or not, and it even brings the drug to the, that cancer cell itself so that you can actually kill it. Or you can think of a little bit more closer to home, let's say you've got lots of food. These are iGen projects, in fact. Um, these are food, let's say you've got food in the fridge. You've got cell by dates but you don't really know if those cell by dates are you know, okay or not. For example, with meat, though they do have a cell by date, you don't really know if it's rotten or not. So you can have um, biosensors, you can have some bacillus, subtilis, these are organisms. Again, changes color if the meat becomes rotten. So these are some, some ideas. I think the idea about synthetic biology is to say, how much can we make, how much, how well can we learn from bacteria about the different molecules they could make, how well can we understand those bacterial pathways, and how well can we use biology to make things that will be beneficial to, for, for humans, either in health or in industry or in, in, in agriculture. I don't know if synthetic biology will replace fossil fuels. Certainly some of the areas that we're interested in looking at here are the use of particular enzymes to generate um, carbon rich materials that could be used as fuel stocks. There are certain green advantages in using bacterial systems rather than um, using a lot of solvents. They tend to work in, in fa fairly benign conditions, so aqueous conditions, which means that the, the, the cost of refining energy rich molecules from bacteria potentially is less than refining energy rich materials from, from oil or other petrol products. But we'll see how that works out. We're some way from knowing that. Well, I don't really agree with this. Okay, so synthetic biology in a way, yes, you can make biofuels using synthetic biology approaches. The problem with biofuels is that it's cost it costs a lot to, to make them. So the way we're using bio, uh, the fuel, fossil fuels now, is very, they're very cheap and you can use lots of them. Now if you want to get to the same level of costs by using synthetic biology, it still costs a lot of money. Well, genetic modification itself got a bad reputation because of the plants. Uh, maybe you remember the genetic tomatoes that was um, sold from Sainsbury's. Oh, that was maybe ten, more than ten years ago, as I think it was. There was a huge media hype. The newspaper attacked it, and then of course the public didn't want it, and then it just completely stopped being sold. And I think this is where it's got its bad mark. Where in those days the the researchers were very much, you know, we're doing our research good for the public, we don't have to explain anything to the public, so we're just, you should listen to us. But that's not how we're approaching synthetic biology now. That said, I think where 
there are um, issues and, and where I think people have got confused with, with um, synthetic biology or with, with um, genetic modification is in the ownership of the genes. So the issue arises not in the fact that we can alter it, but more in the fact that we alter it and then make it a patentable entity that means that certain rice strains that are sold widely in, in developing countries are owned by organisations. Now that's the issue. And so one of the things we're doing in our Symbiochem Centre is working very closely with um, ethicists and people from the Manchester Business School who are extremely well versed in how to be responsible in innovation, how we control the new ideas, the new biological organisms that we're going to make, how we make sure that we're making them for the benefit of all and not to just make certain people or certain areas rich. And that's, our, that's really our goal and we, 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 we have to work with people who, who, for whom that is their main, um, uh, their main action and so we, we're working closely with, with people like that. No, synthetic biology is simply man harnessing what biology has done already. So this is so so we have all evolved from very very small, very simple organisms, and now we are looking at trying to harness some of that evolutionary capability. But we're looking to try and harness it for, for things that will benefit humans. We're not trying to take over the basic natural evolution. We're just trying to use evolution to our advantage. We might be speeding some things up, but remember whenever you were using these synthetic biology approaches and creating maybe some bacteria that has new functions, they will never be going out into the open. It won't be going back into nature, so we won't be actually tampering with a natural evolution process. Where people have got worried is, is that they think that we are, scientists are playing God or acting God or messing with nature. But actually, nature messes with nature all the time. So we are only doing what, what happens anyway. Mm -hmm.